friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Wondering why the camera just shut off on me. Just You didn't see that, of course, but I'd started it, did my opening, and it just turned off. I thought, maybe it just isn't up to it today. <laughs> There's just always something. There's so much more behind the scenes than you would ever, ever even think. This morning, well, part of today, I plan to work more on my mandolin. And you can see there, there's the drawing I made for the vine. And of course it washes out the camera, of course. So I can't hold that up there like that. And by the way, people keep telling me how I can fix that on the camera. If it's complicated and it takes extra time, you know, if I have to go up there and push buttons and change things, it ain't gonna happen. And the reason is, it's not because I'm not capable, it's because I don't have the time to deal with those kinds of things. It, you know, if it gets complicated, then the videos are done. Because it's hard to explain, but the people that have been here and see the work, it's very tedious, technical, con you know, and I'm not gonna take time away from that to do the camera. So there you go. So when things like that go out of focus or they're, you know, washing out the camera. Those are just things I live with and unfortunately you have to live with if you like these videos because I'm just not gonna take the time to deal with it. Okay, there you go. Slight rant. By the way, I really wanted to do a very big rant today on poor design, a lot of it, and it doesn't have anything to do with musical instruments. It's got something to do with things that you use every day, like your refrigerator, just poor design on certain things, and a rant on the fact that those poor designs work themselves into class action lawsuits where all the scumbag lawyers get fat on your money. I have a lot of information on that and personal experience, so if you're interested in hearing a rant like that, let me know. I do think I have some words of wisdom for young people out there that are going into these fields of engineering and design and things like that. And if you're interested in hearing any of that or all of that, let me know because I could get on about a 10 minute rant and, and it will be a one that will be a scorcher, trust me. Okay, well anyway, my point is I've drawn this design I've scanned it into the computer. So now I'm gonna whip the camera over here to kinda look at my screen. And I'm gonna show you some of the steps I have to go through to try to convert this into something the laser cutter can use. You really won't see the whole story, but you'll see some of that in the future videos on the mandolin uh, when, when we get to those parts. But anyway, right now, I just thought I'd show you what I'm doing today since this is a vlog. Okay, that's as good as I can do that way. Now that is just a plain old scan into the computer. If you look at the white piece of paper, basically that's the white piece of paper I scanned in on my scanner. Now, it looks fine even from your distance there. You can probably tell that it does look very much like this, right? Well, the problem is when you zoom this up, and I'm gonna zoom it up a lot so you can see what the problem is. When you zoom it up a lot, see how pixelated it becomes and how nasty it is? Well, that's not good for the laser cutter because it would try to cut all those little tiny dots and all that junk. It would, just, it would just be a nightmare for the laser cutter. So let me back that out and see if I can do this without messing up everything. I'm going to delete that. You know, there is an automatic way to get rid of all that and trace it, but I'll show you what the problem is with that. And that works fairly quickly, but not crazy quickly either. Uh, yeah, so in other words, it does this. Well, I'm trying to get it where you can see it, but you can still see there's little pieces left over, little spots here left over, and it didn't connect this up and it left spots. And I can go in and manually clean all that up, and I already did actually, and I wasted a lot of time, and I'm still not happy with this because it gets thick up here and it's just bad. 
So that didn't work too well either, and I'm not happy with that. The laser cutter would not be real happy with that, but that's the automated way to do it, sort of, kind of. Now here's the manual way to do it, and I literally go around and actually take one of the tools over here, the Bezier tool, or Bezier, or however you say that, B-E-Z-I-E-R, I, I call it Bezier, but I don't even know if that's right. Doesn't matter. Here is the result of that. Now this is a tracing. I literally trace it all the way around. Now see there, that's nice clean lines. Yeah, they're a little bit jaggedy in places, and but the point is that's so tiny that you really don't see the jaggedness of that when you put it down to the actual size. It looks pretty good, and it looks lifelike and leaf-like. So, you know, I can go through now and clean that up a little bit, blow it up and clean it up if I feel like I need to, but that's an actual tracing where I literally go all along the line with the mouse all the way around on both sides of it, as you can see, and it just takes lots of clicks. You just, every time you move, you have to click, move, click, move, click, move, click, move, click, and you click all the way around, both sides, all the way around, all the leaves, both sides. It took quite a little bit of time to do that, but at least I have a decent drawing now that I think I can use. And more importantly, the line size on it is all consistent too, because if it gets thick and thin, thick and thin, well that laser cutter would try to duplicate all that, and it's really complicated. You want to get the drawing as simplified as you can for the laser cutter. Then, of course, someone could say, well you could just cut it all out by hand with a saw. Yeah, I could in a different day and time, I could, but not now, and it's not worth the effort anymore to try that. So, anyway, this is where I'm at, and uh, this is what I'm doing today. So, I just thought I'd show you that. Now, now I'm going to take this, and I'm actually going to do some experimenting on the laser cutter and see what I actually get as a product. And I may have to tweak it. So I hope you enjoyed a look at the little bit of behind the scenes of how I have to uh, work with those graphics and manipulate them to get them to do what I need them to do. Now I do have a few clips from the farm uh, that I just miscellaneous clips. There's a little bit about mushroom hunting. So I just thought I'd show you a little video clip of that. And then I just have a couple other just random clips and pictures. And I just thought you'd enjoy it. So hopefully you will, here they come. Well after finding 13 in one area and 29 in another area, I thought I'd come up on the hill behind the house. And this is way up high on the hill. And people say you don't find them up high, but you do. I find them up here all the time. And I found just one so far, and it is tiny. Can you see it there? Just a little bitty thing right at the end of my finger and I am just going to let it grow I, I mean I'm going to let it go let me say it that way I'm not going to pick it and I'm going to see if it changes size I don't believe it will I have never have seen one change size but people say they will and so I've tried it a half dozen times already and I've never seen one grow even even a tenth of an inch I mean they just never have changed so I don't expect this one to change either but I thought I'll give it a day or two and see what happens Watch my mouth this one that I let go several days ago almost a week ago now in fact it has grown bigger I never have seen that before but it did it this time and I know that's the same mushroom I had never seen them grow bigger before, but this one sure did. Area of the farm that we don't get to very often, it's a big side valley, and I have searched it just about every year for mushrooms and just about every year I find one or two and here's a case now that's a 
elm tree right there that big tree is an elm tree and i always say look by the elm trees and sure enough right down here under the vine can you see it it's right there there it is i'm gonna look around some more because usually when you find one there's usually more just upstream this way about 20 yards I just found a really large mushroom and since this is such a beautiful spot I thought I would show it to you on camera it's just a beautiful place this area here is where the Native Americans lived up on this field up here and it's a high area it would never flood this the main creek right here of course runs in front of it and then down here another creek turns in this way and they lived up on this high plateau but yet it's sheltered by that big hill by this hill here and by the big hill over here so you know it was kind of a windbreak but uh, the beautiful little waterfall there on the farm I just thought you might like to see it well I hope you enjoyed those miscellaneous clips around the farm uh, to George and Judy, I just thought I'd mention that I did find an additional five mushrooms under that big elm tree where we found the 16 the day you were here. And regarding that snake photo that you saw, George, Judy, and I were in our four-wheel drive vehicle touring the farm when we came upon that big fellow. I guess he came out of his long winter hibernation and was stretched out there for us in the sun. Regarding that waterfall, I just thought that was really pretty and thought you might like to see it. Hopefully you enjoyed that as well. That's about all I have for you for today. Let me know if you do want to hear that furious rant because I'd be happy to give it to you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.